Hello and welcome back to the Chumps at News Show. I'm Tom Cristiano. Well, I'm very excited that today we have a wonderful guest, Jane Seeker, the Executive Director of the Newhouse Wildlife Rescue Organization here in Chumpsford. We'll be looking at a lot of the animals that she's currently rescuing and helping, and we'll also be talking about her endeavors to find a new location for her wildlife clinic. Hopefully you'll enjoy the show. Everybody, I'm uh, Jay Newhouse, and this is Stanley, our educational groundhog. We're with Newhouse Wildlife Rescue here in Chelmsford, Massachusetts. Hi. I'm gonna let Stanley run around a little bit because he's got lots of energy this morning. He hey, Stanley. <laughs> I'm gonna zoom in on Stanley. Go for it. You want some kale, buddy? Sometimes Stanley oh. just runs around the rehab room so he can get out some energy. Oh, yeah, yeah. His back, is that? It's normal, so he molted a little bit um, oh. over the winter, and groundhogs oh. do that usually when they're pretty young. Um, oh. And then usually when they're older, they don't do it as much. But it's funny because now, where he was bald, now he has very lush fur, so the yeah, rest and he of has a pattern on, the, on his back, a yeah. pattern of... Yeah, it almost looks like a heart when he sits down. Wow. It's too funny. And I get them in my yard quite a bit, too. Yeah. I'm sure they're there living under the garage oh, or yeah. something. Oh, yeah, some people have them. Some yeah. people have them. And then here we have some baby reds, oh. red squirrels. Red squirrels, nice. They're crazy energetic, so I'm nervous to open the door all the way. Oh, okay. Let me see if I get a shot Whoop. of... Whoop. Yeah, that, that's... A, um, they might not let us... Yep, I zoomed in on this Perfect. little guy. Perfect. Perfect. And then um, we have some groundhogs so in here. These are our older babies. They're, well, they're more like teenagers, but they're not quite ready to go in an outdoor cage yet. Oh. oh. So they're, they're almost ready. We just got to work on weaning them a little I'm, bit. I'm zooming in, see if I can... Hey, fellas. It's four of them in there. Four of them in there? Wow. So somebody brought in the four baby groundhogs? Yes. Yep, all four of them. Wow. And they're coming along nicely, right? Yeah, they're doing great. Uh, those ones weren't terrible. I'm just going to lock their door. They weren't terrible. Some of the animals are in way worse shape than others, depending on... Um, how long it takes people to find them. Oh. Um, whenever, whenever they're orphans. So if it's just been a few days, they come in and they're a little bit dehydrated. If it's been several days, they're in really rough shape. Oh. Um, here's some of our baby squirrels. Yeah, Ray, these are regular gray squirrels regular gray that squirrels. I see in my. Yeah. So yeah. somebody brought them in as they were abandoned babies yeah, these or guys something? Were very, very young. Like Pinky's no fur when they first came in. Um, oh my. I think I saw the picture that there you posted. Were, we got so many pinkies this year. Yeah. Uh, but most of them, when their trees were cut down, people didn't realize there was a nest. Sometimes we, oh. we always talk people through reuniting strategies because sometimes mom will take her babies and move them to a different location. Yeah. Uh, but when she doesn't come back, uh, they usually come here. This one's four. And how many came with that litter? Uh, there were just uh, three in, with this one. Three. But so we have like... I think 19 squirrels here right now. Wow. Yeah, wow. a lot more in the outdoor cages now, thank goodness. Oh, and you have the baby possums that you... Uh, uh, yes, yes, they are... Oh, they're here? They're in an incubator? Oh, yeah, they're very... Yeah, because they were very small. Um, yeah. Oh, look at, they're still so small. Let me zoom in on this guy, okay? Mm -hmm. So these ones are mamas hit by a car. Uh, and we were not able to save their mom, so we had to pull the babies out of her pouch. Um, and so they require feedings um, every two and a half hours all day and all night. Every two and a half hours? Mm -hmm. Do, who doesn't get sleep at night? <laughs> well, luckily, the past few days, uh, Tiny, who's here working right now, has been taking them home. Um, so we okay. usually take turns so oh. that somebody can get a decent night of rest. So and who is... In, Tiny. You've met Tiny. She's in the back. Oh, I was thinking of a, a man's name, but yeah, I know that's the, the woman that's yeah, been here quite a while. Yeah. She helps so much, right? Yeah, she's awesome. 
Oh, and there's the cute baby skull. Let me zoom in on him, okay? Look at how cute he is. Oh my God. Yeah. It's adorable. So she actually had a lot of fly eggs on her when we found yeah. or when she was brought here. So whenever they have a fly strike, which is like little white speckles all over them, it's like stuck to their fur. Oh. That's when flies are laying eggs on them. And those will oh. hatch usually within 24 hours. Oh. And maggots will wreak havoc, even if the animal's still alive. Like, oh. it's, it's awful. So we're very lucky she was brought in when she was, because we were able to get the eggs off before they hatched. Nice, no, that's good, thankfully. Yeah. And how do you get the eggs off? Um, we have special uh, brushes that we use oh, to get them off. Uh, and then we'll just bathe them and wash the rest of them off. So oh. we have medicine to give them in case any of them try to hatch if we miss a couple. Because they'll oh, come right. in with hundreds of them. Hundreds the poor thing. So yeah. what would have happened if you didn't rescue this oh, little guy? So sad, definitely. Oh. Like, yeah, the maggots would have, would have done a... Done and maybe she wouldn't have made she it? definitely wouldn't have made oh. it. Not one more day, for sure. These are some slightly older baby possums that we have. Ooh, oh my nice. God, let me, I'll zoom in on this guy too, okay? Sure. I got him. So how old is this guy? I want to say... Like six weeks. I'm bad at remembering the actual age. I just know the grams because the uh, grams they are, d depending on how big they are, I change up whether they need to go inside or outside. So uh, I know they're like 60 to 70 grams, but I can't remember how that correlates with exactly what age they are. Oh, that's they'd a, still be in but, mom's pouch. But hopefully most people know by now that possums are wonderful animals to have right. around. They eat ticks, which most... Right. Ticks are so terrible, I think. They and a lot of bugs, too, and rodents. Bugs and rodents. Yeah, so just about every... I don't know if you know, I have six cameras around my house. And just about every night, I see possums, raccoons. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Steve the skunk. I've seen on your face. I, uh, face. Yeah, good, good, because I got some great videos of Steve really? in my yard, you know. Yeah, he's great. They, he doesn't spray or anything. He just um, he's a beautiful with the little white in the, at the end of his tail yeah. and a lot of white on his like back. Slightly different coloring. It's really cool. Yes. Are yeah. You cool? Are you cool? Oh, you, shall we zoom in on the little bird? You feed? Yeah, I might this, have to feed him again. Oh, there we go. This is a starling that was brought in recently, right? Yes, that was, I think, this past weekend. And was, I did not think this one was going to make it. It was so oh. skinny. And their metabolisms are so fast. Oh. Uh, and it had gone a couple of days without eating. Really? Uh, oh. Yeah, the finder had had it for a couple of days. So, um, but yeah, he's doing really good now. <laughs> Needs feedings every half hour, but not at night, so. Every half hour? Every half and hour. And who does it? Yeah. So uh, it's whoever's in here, wow. like at the time. So Tiny usually leaves at three o'clock. Uh, usually the morning we'll, we'll bang out stuff together because all the feedings are due first thing in the morning. All the animal cages are done, need to be done. Uh, so it's just constant, it's, it's teamwork for sure. Oh. It's one of our younger baby groundhogs. A young, how about if I zoom into sure. him or her? <laughs> hey, groundhog, hey. We have this uh, snapping turtle that just came in last night. Uh, we I just posted a photo of a snapping turtle. Oh, you got to be careful, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so support on that. Oh, you're peeing. Nice. So this one had um, had a hook stuck in its mouth. Oh, the poor thing. So James, that works with us, who lives in Chumsford, also. It specializes in turtles, so we worked together to get the hooks out of his mouth yesterday. That must have been so uh, difficult, right? Yeah. It, did you have to... Yeah. They say they're frequently, uh, when they x-ray turtles that have been injured, they frequently find hooks in them. Oh, the um, poor yeah, things. a lot of times that nothing can be done, like if it goes down too far. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely... Uh, but if you look at my Facebook page this morning, I just posted a picture of a turtle. A snapper? With the a same snapper? site? Yeah, you know, right outside of Hart Pond on Monday morning. Oh, really? And he was on the, the road, but or she was going to move later. But Yeah. So they 
totally still while I took the photos, of course. Yeah. And then I posted one on my page this morning. That's but cool. yeah, I like turtles a lot. Yeah. And I know to be careful about in the front where they they could bite oh, yeah, and significantly yeah, yeah. take your finger off or something. I actually can't take your finger off, which is something I learned from James. I thought oh. they could too. They could hurt they could hurt it really bad though. It definitely would hurt They can't oh that's if that's they, good right? to know. Interesting. Let me show you um Oh, our flying squirrels in here. Oh, you have a fly? Do they actually fly or is it more they gliding? Glide. I'll show you. Um, so they have a lot of extra skin right I'm here. zooming in. Yeah, you see this skin right here? Yes, yeah. That's what helps them to glide. So they can glide like 30 feet and their tail wow. is very flat. Oh, I see the flatness yeah, of like the tail. Yeah, it's like a rudder. It helps steer them whenever they're gliding. Wow. There's a lot of them here in uh, in Chumsford. Actually, really? People don't realize that they're nocturnal. Oh. And they're they're very shy. They're up in trees, so most people just never even see them. Wow. And how, how many do you have? One? Or? We just have a single right now. She came in very young and orphan and very thin. Uh, she's oh. likely going to get transferred out because we haven't received another one. Uh, so we're trying to group her up with others. It's better oh, isn't that nice? Others of their own oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. So then, let's see, over here, we have some baby bunnies. Oh my God, everybody loves the baby bunnies, right? So cute. I have them in my yard too, but I see the bigger ones. Yeah, they've been so They big love my year. organic lawn because I don't use any weed killer. Yeah. So I got all kinds of clover. I do the same clover. thing, yeah. I'm zooming in now and um, I hope everybody could see. Oh, I gotta make sure the focus is okay. It, oh, there's one right there. Mm -hmm. So how old do you think These they are? are? about two weeks old. Just two weeks mm -hmm. old, wow. And somebody found them in their yard or These something? These were two groups, yeah. Uh, one where a dog uh, destroyed the nest and mom didn't come back. And oh. the other one where they were tilling her entire yard and they found them before they started tilling. Oh. And they were like, there's nothing we could, we are tilling. And mom's not going to come back after they've decimated the whole area yeah. so unfortunately oh. yeah that oh was my god situation stanley you so, having fun look at stanley over there hey stanley you out, buddy? come here so now i'll take you in the raccoon room but it's gonna be loud okay so the main thing right now is trying to find our clinic trying to find a place for a new house um it's been all encompassing to work with architects, civil engineer, our civil engineer, our attorney, uh, going to town meetings, trying to get approval for a certain town land. So in between all of this, it's like uh, extra chaotic, but um, learning a lot about processes. And I think that understanding where, where the coolest task force approved us for the coolest property, but there are so many different processes in town. So initially, the plan was going to be when the coolest task force approved us, then we would go to the select board. Yes. Uh, but now that just got changed, and now the select board's not considering it until um, until conservation makes their recommendations. Uh, and that wasn't the initial plan. So, uh, but regardless, the the way that it would work, I believe in any town, is it's going to take a year. I think it's probably going to take this situation probably closer to two. Um, and I, ideally, we definitely we could move faster on. Um, just because it's uh, it, it's quickly, it's already too much. <laughs> yeah. But the need is so great, though. You know, yes. I don't know if it's because we had such a mild winter yeah. last year, but there are so so many orphan animals. Massachusetts is the third most densely populated state in the country. Really? As far as peak per capita, yeah. like. Um, wow. So there's so many human wildlife conflicts, wow. you know, animals hit by cars, trees cut down. Most of the animals we receive is because of some human wildlife conflict interaction. So, uh, so they need us, you know, and, uh, and the community really rallies and, and supports us. So right now the thought is looking at where we can actually purchase land, which obviously still sets us back because now instead of trying to raise the 500,000 to build a clinic, uh, from scratch, now we're looking to purchase land, so we'll probably need to raise more than that. Um, but I think that with with the support of the community applying for grants, I mean, we can get that done 
sooner than waiting for approval on Coolis. And in the end, if we wait for approval for two years and then they say no, yeah. then we're at square one. So we um, might say no at the end of two years. Are you talking about the state? The state, uh, the select board can say no. Conservation could say no right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like the coolest task force had to say, had to say yes. I guess didn't even actually have to say yes because they were saying it's just a recommendation. I, I'm, I'm confused by how that all went down, but um, oh. we went to, I think, seven or eight meetings. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, it was very intensive. Uh, and each meeting was an hour uh, and it's crazy busy, but the task force wow was great they they uh, a lot of them were, were very supportive and in the end we got a unanimous vote but that took a lot of time but now it's it's kind of starting over with with conservation um so i don't know it's all so confusing but i think that we're going to start looking in another direction now um so could i ask you more about that of course like, yeah uh, what towns are you looking at and how Returns. much land yeah you... i'm hoping for honestly we were we said 2.5 for coolest because we were really trying to make it work but really we need like three to five acres yeah. uh, so we're looking we're still looking at land in chelmsford oh. and then all the surrounding towns um, carlisle westford um, even in, in Tewksbury, we're looking in Littleton. There's even a select board member in Wilmington that's looking for land for us, which wow. was really nice to hear that yeah. you know, someone higher up in the town wants us, yeah. you know, wants to help us get in. So um, I don't know uh, what we're going to end up doing. So um, all I, I keep trying to update the public so they know, because a lot of people have donated towards it. So yes, yeah. we have about 200000 right now in a separate yeah. bank account that is way waiting for whenever we, you know, figure out what's going on. But I yeah. think right now it just keeps, it just keeps changing. Cause initially I was like, we'll get the land donated. You know, um, some people were very optimistic that we would get coolest property. Um, and then it wasn't until probably about a month or two ago, that the timeline became so extensive that I realized or was told how extensive the timeline was. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I just, we just keep adjusting and changing and, and trying to figure out how to work around it. I'm getting advice from other rehabbers that have done it themselves and um, everyone, everyone's experience is very different, you know. If um, you go to another town, Jane, won't it also be a long process to get all the approvals and everything? If it's no? town owned land, yes. Oh, but if it's oh, not but town owned yeah, land, then what? If it's uh, private, then, then it moves a lot faster. Oh. So I'm looking at land for sale in in all around like with, with Chelmsford. There's very little when you're talking about a plot that's three to five acres. There's very little options. Yes. <laughs> uh, so so really we're having to look at at. Um, all around Chelmsford as well. So. Do you need running water and sewage facility yeah. wherever you go? We well, basically so, need to have all the same things that someone's house would. Well, wouldn't uh, that make it extremely expensive right now to buy land? It would. It would. It's uh, like huge, just a, a plot, a buildable plot. It's at least 300000 in Chelmsford yep. right now, if not more in some locations. So yeah. it's going to be so hard it to is, pay for is. all of this but, um, if you buy it like with the water and sewage facilities, yeah. then three to five acres. Yeah. Wow. But we're still holding out hope for Chelmsford at the coolest property, right? Now owned by the it's town. It's possible. Yeah, I think it's it's a backup plan now for oh, us. It's a you know, if nothing oh. else works out over the next two years and oh. uh, when we get approved. Um, but in the interim, I'm, I'm trying to see what I can do to find something else with maybe more nice. land or something that can move faster. So, so we'll are you looking on your own or do you look online for real estate? Yeah, for I look it online. I've been talking, oh. and I did a post yesterday. A lot of people responded with some ideas, so trying to look into those. The other problem is that this is during mid baby season, so it's hard to. Put the time towards that when we're spending so much time in here taking yes. care of the animals taking the phone calls uh, but also it's hard to not think about it because we're so slammed you can only fit so many people in this room if we had a larger clinic we could have more help we could accept yes. more volunteers and we could accept yes. more animals so even though i'm really busy it's hard for me to let it go right now because it's in my face every day that we don't have the space yes. we need i'm having to refuse people 
that call yeah. desperate because they found an animal that's hurting or suffering or their kids found it and I yeah. just I can't like I cannot with the space that I have you know yeah. um, of, can I interrupt real quick yeah. I'm yeah. sorry oh you still want to be at, or uh, this is separate no okay. this is good my friend Crystal just you can keep it rolling oh, okay she uh just uh, sent me a message. She found her mother found a baby weasel. They can't find a rehabber. She's willing to rehab it herself. No, she and they already it. fed a kid milk. Tell her stop feeding her brain here ASAP and send a picture so I can assess the age. Right. That's what I said. Just making sure. I can transfer it once we get it stable. Weasels, the nice thing about weasels is you can, you can find a lot of rehabber that'll take weasels. Oh. Uh, the animals that we struggle with are the um, the possums, the oh. uh, raccoons, the um, squirrels? rabbits, the squirrels, well, because the squirrels. there's so many of them, so yeah. many of them. Uh, so we struggle with those. But usually oh. the um, the weasels, the the beavers, otters, things like that that are less common, you, yes. you can find space for them. Uh, so. Well, so, so we talked a minute about your wonderful site on Facebook. Most people don't. It's called New House Wildlife Rescue, Wildlife Rescue, right? Yep. People could find it easily that way on Facebook. Yep. And you have what was it like 162,000 followers or something? Yeah, something like something that. Like? Yeah, it's like over. Could you think about 000. that? This is a chump show. Crazy, yeah. Rescue with 162,000 followers throughout the world, I believe. Right? It is throughout the world. So <laughs> even Nibby, who you were just filming earlier, has been on National Geographic. Yeah. Like it's and and she's also been on CNN. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, we had the that nice video there in CNN yeah, of yeah. Nibby, and she was like building something inside she had, here. She had that viral video that had over the, 11 million views. 11 on it. million? Yeah. It's, wow. It's, I love that um, it's something special in Chelmsford that has gotten international attention that a lot of the community supports. You know, that's why I love being here. That's why I want to stay here. Yeah. Um, it's just, we're just struggling trying to find a way, but we're not yes. going to. We're gonna build a clinic, whether it's in Chelmsford or very close to Chelmsford, but we're gonna make it happen. Well, every morning I go to your site on Facebook, New House Wallet Rescue, and you invariably you have one or two posts that I want to share on my Chelmsford Friends group yep. on Facebook, which has about 5,000 members. Nice. And um, you write so well, Jane. I don't know if you realize that. Did you ever take writing courses or something? No, it's just something I always love doing. It's like Facebook's like a dear diary. This is what happened today. <laughs> and it's wonderful. And I'm so glad you have the energy to do it, though. It's, because that's therapeutic for me. It doesn't uh, feel like work at all. And, and, uh, and the feedback from people is recharging, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah. Know? Speaking of the feedback, I was going to mention, you get hundreds of replies or comments yeah. to almost every one of your posts and tons of shares to people share it hundreds it's amazing it's crazy i love it especially because if you think about it that complete success would be the animal never has to come in here right yes so yeah. if i do a post about how to live with groundhogs uh, how to keep them out of your vegetable garden how to um get a raccoon to leave your house without having to hire someone to kill it and you know yes every yeah. If, if we save animals by never even having to see them, just by this video being shared thousands of times and the information getting out there, don't use rat poison. So many people don't even realize what it does. Yeah. The minute they realize it, they're like, I never thought about it. Oh my God, I'll never touch it again. Yes. So just, that's one, one of the most important things about the Facebook page is yes. we get the information out there and we save so many lives. We don't have to spend any money saving those lives. We're yes. just getting information out there. Yes. So yeah. uh, that's, that's one huge thing about it that I love. But yeah, definitely, I love the engagement I love the the comments I love reading them um, you read you don't I, read I don't all read the all, I can't oh, read can't. all of them but yeah. sometimes like late at night you know when I'm finished feeding animals or, or if I sometimes if I've had a really bad day yeah. let's say we had an animal pass away or something yeah. and I'll post about it and I'll go through the comments and it's just complete strangers but their words sometimes really when I need to hear it, you yes, know, yeah. it's uh, it's incredible. It's they must incredible. write such wonderful messages thanking you and your clinic for all that you do yeah, for these of, poor animals that are poisoned, they're sick, right. or hit by cars. Yeah, they're very supportive. Oh a lot of good people out there that, that want to see the animals being helped. So, And speaking of help, you also have a Patreon 
yes, system, yep. right? And I'm one of your Patreon members. Yes, so that's right. Every yeah. month something goes automatically onto my credit card. Yes. And you have uh, hundreds of them right now, yes. thankfully. Yeah. So do you want to talk a little sure. about how people could become a patron? Yeah, so this? Patreon's more, it's personal. Patreon. So it's not okay. New House Wildlife. That yeah. The funds from Patreon go to me directly. Yeah. Um, and that is basically a, a behind the scenes look at what's happening with the animals for people yeah. who want to dive in a little bit deeper on yeah. what's going on with the rescue, with the release, um, with treating an animal. Um, all of us working in here together what it's really like so it's it's more vi it's video it's video and then they get to also help name some of the animals that come I in see here that, yes, yeah yeah so that's a lot of fun they get it's really excited wonderful. about naming the animals but you really do this because you you're here full time yep. you probably work i don't know 70 hours a week or whatever with the feeding and the and the worry about everything, but taking care of everything. Then you have somebody in the office now, don't you? Too? I do. I have a full-time office lady uh, right now that answers the the Facebook messages that come in, yeah. uh, and then I have a full-time lady who answers the phones. Uh, but even then, full-time would be eight hours a day. But the phone rings all day, all night. You know, oh, yeah. so it's 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 so hard to to get to everybody, um, and then. I'm usually handling the triage and things in here and all the ACOs uh, around the state and other rehabbers reach out to me directly on my personal cell. So I'm working with them to try and accept the animals, transfer animals, things like that. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just, just everything with trying to run the place. It's, it takes us a lot of people working full time now with that as quickly as it's grown. I mean, before you? 50 was the max animals I would take in. And now we've taken in, um, We've got about 80 of them here now. 80? Wow. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think this year when I talked to my office manager, we've taken in 350 animals and it's it's just turning June, you know, already this year. So wow. last year we took in 400, I think 450 animals total. So this year we're going to be Oh away my God. That. Yeah. Because so many more people maybe know about you now and yeah. everything. And on your Facebook page, you do have your the phone number, right? Yes, uh, the under, main wildlife number. The main yeah. wildlife number. And that's where this helper can answer the phone or yeah. something? Yeah. And um, that's under, again, Newhouse Wildlife Rescue on Facebook. And also, um, you have links there sometimes if people want to help and donate. Yes. Either yeah. with financially through the credit card, or sometimes you post a list of what you need that they could buy through Amazon or something, yes. right? Yes, that's great. That works out awesome. And awesome. people help out so much, right? They do. And they and everything that you see, all the enclosures, all the food these animals are eating, like their wonderful meals and, and their blankets and their cushions and these incubators, yes. everything is fun. Uh, by the community, it's it's incredible. It's incredible. That one hundred sixty-two thousand right. member community. It's yeah, amazing. It's, it's incredible. And then even those who can't donate will just share the information. They're helping save animals oh, yes. by getting the information out there. Yes. So yeah. everyone's helping, and uh, so it's definitely not a not a single person effort. But it's it's awesome. It's it's it, it feels good. You know, I feel like you're making a difference. Well, you are, Jane. It's you're so awesome. And all your helpers are. And your fiance Johnny helps out a lot yeah, so much. Yeah, they're all great. And um, is there anything you'd like to say before we wrap up I our show? I think shows? so. I think we pretty we much covered. We covered pretty a much lot. covered. Yeah. Well, Jane, thank you so much Absolutely. for allowing us to come here from Chelmsford News. Yeah. I think this is our third or fourth show that yeah. we've done together. I think so. And I enjoyed every one because I'm a big animal lover. Yeah. Probably right up there with you. Right. Many yeah. years ago, I I was working here in Chelmsford, maybe th over 30 years ago, to try to eliminate leg hole traps for beavers in the town and we succeeded awesome uh, because it used to upset me and some some of my committee members so much because to get an animal stuck in a leg hole trap is oh, terrible so bad and i also worked uh, i was the chairman of the committee get us a new dog pound yeah uh, oh, 40 years ago really yeah oh, yeah because awesome. and we do have a nice dog pound yeah, now yeah. animal I see you when I go to pick up my son from yep. school. Oh, By Newark. Oh, yeah. what school is he going to? Uh, McCarthy. Is that what you're talking about? The yeah, right near McCarthy. McCarthy. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what, what I'm saying is 
I like animals, I love animals, yeah. kind of with you. That's why every morning I love going to your page. I love seeing your photos, your write-ups. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jane, yes. and all of your helpers for all that you do for our animal friends. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. But thank you, Jane. You're welcome.